Hello and welcome back. And that's right, today, unfortunately, we've got to talk about WD dropping the ball again. I'm getting sick of saying that now, and I don't like talking about it, but there's still no avoiding that they are a brand that has really fallen from grace in the eyes of a lot of people. And although today we are talking more precisely about SanDisk, they are a WD brand, and ultimately all of their NAND comes from the same location. And today we're going to be talking about failures on these, the SanDisk Extreme and Extreme Pro external SSDs. An SSD that I have been recommending for years. Indeed, I have been using this very SSD in my collection of backups and when I'm doing portable off-site work for a long time. And by the sound of it, I and a lot of other users should probably start looking at our firmware updates for these and have no look and seeing if we are affected. But before we get ahead of ourselves, let's get actually get into the meat and potatoes of this. SanDisk Extreme Pro and Extreme 4TB and indeed 2TB buyers suddenly reporting that their drives have stopped working. Either they've stopped working or they have effectively wiped themselves or that the data on board is no longer accessible. First reported from what I can see online over on uh, uh, ARS Technica, this week website has been going into a lot more detail about the communication with WD and talking about a lot of experiences users have been reporting online. Although there will be a link uh, to our own article that NAS compares on this, I do recommend checking out the links to um, that article as well. And it has obviously linked to lots of other stuff there. Reports online from multiple users talking about how data has become inaccessible and drives wiping and corrupting data on uh, extreme pro ssds and this has been something that's been known about for quite a while and reports of you know sandisk and wd's resolution to this and responses to this being somewhat withheld let's put it like that you may have noticed during prime day and a lot of people have been talking about this uh, here's an example of one of the more commonly referenced tweets about the sandisk drives being on offer during prime day during all of those promo events and although there's almost certainly an element of truth to that i don't think wd are just trying to junker these drives uh during sales i will say the sandisk extreme and extreme pro drives have been on sale every prime day and black friday for the last three to four years i've seen that consistently so i don't think the two are directly correlated but i think w uh, wd slash sandisk would have done a much better job to have been louder about these reported failures on these ssds and the growing concerns around them up to this point so if you have been impacted by this you'll know because your data is just you can't access it anymore but if you do own a 4tb drive it is heavily recommended that you head over to wd's website and update that firmware when it was first rolled out it was already highlighted on a few forums so there didn't seem to be much uh, understanding why this firmware had been rolled out for the 4TB drives. And when you go over to the site, it's very easy to update. You have to use the desktop client tool. They are handy guides walking you through exactly how to do it and updating that firmware. But this apparently fixes the issue. Although ARS have spoken with SanDisk about this and they have reported that they are aware of this failing, once again, it only seems to have been extended, at least on the SanDisk side, to the 4TB model, despite 40, uh, 2TB model owners also reporting issues there. Now, again, uh, lots of user information have been exchanged online. A lot of these affected users, both within uh, photo and video editing circles, where obviously having a higher performing scratch disk is incredibly important for users that are doing on-off projects and moving data. But even standard backup users like myself are going to be impacted by this because I utilize this as a temporary backup when I am off-site, perhaps when I was in Computex there, as another layer of my backup strategy or when I can a job or I'm doing a recording like this one I will make sure that temporarily if I haven't got my data backed up at least onto one NAS I will have it on a NAS and on this drive here temporarily as I move between my editing station and recording areas now I do that because I want to have another live copy here what I don't want is to have my localized copy here and backing up to the NAS where there could be any number of issues that happen in between because that is an automated synchronized process uh, with differential backups this is meant to be one of my safety nets and the idea that I could put data on this that I might want to recall in a few days from now when I begin the editing process because I don't immediately edit is disconcerting to me so 
at least for now, uh, until I hear that SanDisk have totally resolved this and rolled out firmware updates for these drives. Until I know that has happened, I am not going to be recommending these SanDisk drives moving forward. This is nothing against WD and it's not against SanDisk in general. But definitely these drives, a drive that I have recommended for a very long time, I'm rescinding that uh, backup for, uh, uh, you know, a credit for this because I don't like the way this has been handled by Santis here. And again, I'm going to link to all of this, including that tweet below where a lot of users have talked a little bit more about this. And particularly, there's going to be users right now who are buying this drive during Prime Day when I'm recording this video that the firmware update right now may not be available to them and when they do get this drive it's not going to have the latest firmware and a lot of users and i buy a lot of users i mean most users that buy an external drive do not buy uh, do not upgrade the firmware on an external drive on day one they don't like installing um proprietary client tools on the windows or mac system ergo they're going to be heavily reliant on what the base level firmware is for this. And what we're seeing is this this has been a relatively recently noticed issue. And therefore, it's going to be a relatively recent run of this drive, which unfortunately is going to be these users here who may have bought these larger drives. So again, SanDisk, you've got to be louder about this because... To me, I had to struggle to find your own official knowledge on this. And when I did find your statements... It was in the ARS article here and referenced online. So again, if you have purchased the SanDisk Extreme Pro uh, or Extreme Drive during Prime Day, or indeed you have one already, update that firmware. Or if you bought it during the Prime Day sale and there's no option to update, run integral checks applications such as Crystal Disk, which you can utilize to um, check your localized system and have a look at the health of any given drive inside your system. So at the moment, I've got one drive inside this test rig here that I believe is at 98%. That drive will tell me where there's bad blocks, tell me if there's any issues, but also tell me the firmware revision of a drive. Now, if you have been impacted by this and lost data, Needless to say, you've got a five-year hardware warranty there. You're going to be able to turn that around remarkably quickly. Indeed, you've still got the 30-day no quibble return policy there. But this isn't about um, having that failure and knowing you're going to get a replacement or even a refurbished drive, which is disgusting at this point. It is the fact that this is core data. And therefore, the idea that not just the drive breaking, but the entire structure of that drive may be unstable is where the big worry is there. Particularly, let's go back to that um, Reddit post there where we had the user that was reporting the complete corruption of that data. You might have silent corruption, which is so much worse than the drive just dying on the spot. When the drive dies on the spot and you've got other backups, you might think to yourself, oh, I can go to one of my other backups. But silent corruption, the equivalent of bit rot, although this is not what this is, is so much worse when you might be retrieving template files that you may have created 3, 6, 12 months ago and not know that they are on an unstable drive. So once again, run your firmware update. Double check that the drive is at full health. And also, right now, do not trust these drives as your primary storage or even your secondary storage until we can be confident that this is resolved. I know this might seem like I'm making a mountain out of a molehill, but when it comes to backups, you need to take things up to 11 anyway. So once again, double check if you've got these drives. If you've already got one of these drives, update your firmware. And for now, I'd maybe err away from this drive series until things are a little bit more established. If we need to make another video on this, I will. I don't think we will unless we'll update the article with firmware updates as we know more. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. Sorry it's such a miserable video today. Uh, we'll get back to actual interesting and not um, sad videos soon. Apart from that, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.